today, we're reviewing the all new G82 M4 and its manual. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. We are back at BMW of Turnersville once again. They gave us the keys to a brand new G82 M4 before its release date, access to a private track, and today we're going to review it. So once again, huge thanks to Paul and Adam for making this happen over here at BMW of Turnersville. This is the all new 2021 G82 M4, the replacement to the F82 that we know and love. Now this car is officially debuting in about two weeks, so we got a sneak peek and we wanted to bring you along. Let's start with the exterior, we'll talk about it, we'll go into the interior and then we're going to take it on the private test track. We're going to start right big front and obvious, so the grills. When I first saw the grills, I didn't really care for them, but it was also a big shock because the car was going to be completely transformed from the F80 and the F82 that we know and love to this brand new style. We didn't know what to expect and we did not expect this. Now, when I first saw it, I wasn't really feeling it. But after seeing it more and more and more, I really appreciate the way that BMW just jumps out and they like to just design something that stands out. When you look at something like a Porsche, you know, from the 70s till now, they pretty much look the same. I mean, they have subtle changes throughout. BMW is much more progressive. It allows more airflow. And I can appreciate that BMW just dove in and tried to do something different. And as car enthusiasts, Different is not always a bad thing. I mean, hey, I've got $55,000 of different on my car. If you didn't see that video, link in the description. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how BMW made this pretty square at the top, but I will say to make it look better, they did blend in these lines from the hood with these little indentations. Would have been cool if they were scoops, but still, I think it's a pretty good design element. Now for lighting on the M4, as you can see, this one is equipped with the BMW laser lights, which is the replacement to the LEDs. Now, one thing that I appreciate about BMW is they take typically, typically use real vents and grills that actually have airflow. So as you can see, massive airflow, massive airflow. You have to close off the middle portion because that's where the crash bar is. Massive airflow. Over here on the left and the right, you're going to have ducts that filter that air to your brakes for better cooling. And over here, you have a little auxiliary radiator. Let's check out this side. Looks like the exact same thing on the other side. And then over here in the corners, this is fully functional just to help direct air out and around the tire. One thing that I really like about this specific M4 is the shadow line package, which is going to add these gloss black accents. We have them here. We have a splitter, a side skirt, and then also a gloss black rear diffuser. User. If you saw our video on the M440i, it's a great looking car, but it doesn't have the body lines that this M4 does. If you look over here, it's got amazing lines. It also looks a lot more muscular than something like a regular 4 Series to make sure that it stands out. It also has the standard side grills, which you're always going to find on an M4 and an M3, but unfortunately, I don't think it really does anything. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't do anything, but it looks really cool. It is open but I doubt that's anything. Something that's also very new for this generation car, if you look at this reflector, typically you have the, the amber in the front and you have the red in the back. Look what BMW did. They tried to make it look a little bit smoked out so it's not that bright color in your face, but this actually looks pretty good. On this car, it is equipped with the 826 M wheels, which are a 19 inch in the front and a 20 inch in the rear. So if you're rotating your wheels, make sure you put the 20s in the back and the 19s in the front. Now, looking through the wheels, we can see that this car has the standard steel brake package with the blue calipers. It does have an option where you can get a carbon ceramic, and it also has an option where with the standard brakes, you can get it in different colors for the first time. So you want blue, or a different color, your dreams can come true. As you'd expect to find on an M car, it does have the M mirrors, and BMW is really liking the smoked out thing because it has a smoked indicator on the thing. 
<laughs> Following that body line back, we have a decent sized hip, which is going to bring us to the rear of the car. And once again, you will notice that BMW has those reflectors, which are mandated by law in the United States, but they figured out a way to smoke them and make them look a million times better. Now, towards the back of the car, BMW did a much better job at making this look a thousand times more aggressive than they did on any E90, E92, F80, F82. It finally has an actual diffuser, so it looks great. Only thing I don't really care about is how this opening looks super square. I think it looks a little bit off, but all things considered, it still looks a million times better than it ever has before. It also features these quad exhaust pipes, and hey, while we're here, let's see how it sounds. finish out the back, we have a couple things. So one thing I think is pretty neat, BMW integrated the backup camera into the roundel. It has a CS sort of style trunk lip. Um, one thing that you'll notice on these newer cars is BMW isn't bringing the lip to the end of the trunk anymore. They're, you know, pulling it like a, a quarter inch shy. So something you might start to see. And I love what BMW is doing with the new lights. A lot of car companies are doing it but it makes it just so much more 3D and just so much more dynamic. Um, with that, let's head up to the front and talk about what's under the hood. And on our way to under the hood, we can check out that amazing BMW carbon fiber roof that we know and love. Under the hood, we can find that S58. It is an inline six cylinder, three liter twin turbo, and it is amazing. It puts out 480 horsepower and about 405 foot-pound of torque on the base and on the competition, it puts out 510 horsepower in 470 foot-pound torque. So if you're looking for that extra bump right out of the gate before tuning is available for it, the competition is the way to go. However, as we said before, we're going to get into that in a little bit. This car is manual. If you want a manual car, this is your option. You cannot get the manual in the competition. Now, as many of you know, the S58 is also found in the X3M and the X4M. In this state, this car will run zero to 60 in about four seconds. If you have the competition, knocks it down to about 3.7 seconds. Looking under the hood, you will notice that BMW scrapped that carbon fiber strut brace in lieu of this aluminum one, which, it's functional, but it just doesn't look as cool. Now on the previous generation that had the S55, there was a big issue where the crank hub would spin and could lead to catastrophic motor failure. But BMW thought ahead and they designed the S58 and also the B58 in a way where that's no longer an issue. Now following suit with the S55, they use a charge cooler system. You can see the, the cooler itself down here under the intake manifold. They actually have these all as one component, but BMW is cooling that charged air with coolant instead of just a typical air to air intercooler. So you're going to have a heat exchanger in the front. Typically it has a separate it's separate yet still connected cooling system and it's extremely efficient. Now, getting an aftermarket one might take a little bit of time to, to get that to market because it is so integrated into this intake manifold, but it'll be here soon. And then you can't really see them all that well, but for those of you who are wondering, the turbo is sitting down here. So there's one over here and then there's one right back there. Now let's jump inside and talk about the interior. As you'd expect, BMW has their brand new G-Series comfort access system where you can have it set up one of two ways. Way number one, you have a perimeter. When you walk inside that perimeter, your car automatically unlocks and as you walk away from your car, it automatically locks. Or you can have it set the way I like it where you touch the handle, it unlocks, you touch the handle again and it locks. All right, as you know, the M4 is the two door and the M3 is the four door. So let's get this over with. We're gonna jump in the back and show you how much leg room you could expect if you are a fully grown adult. All right, so as far as roominess in the back of the M4, the driver's seat is positioned where I was driving. So I have a decent amount of leg room. The seat is actually very comfortable. It has this really nice leather in it. Um, what's not very comfortable is I'm only 5'11", and if I put my head straight, I hit the roof. So if you're <laughs> five, six or under, maybe it's okay. Um, I wouldn't personally want to go for a long drive back here, but if you have kids, um, it's very nice. Just keep in mind with the M4s and a lot of BMWs, um, two doors, you don't normally have a seat in the middle. 
there's a bump here, but there's no seat belt. Let's pull this down and see what's, oh, okay. I was expecting a cup holder, but it's got the through loading system, which is nice if you need to go skiing in your M4. Okay, there's no cup holders back here. For those of you wondering, I have a little hanger hook over here if you wanna hang a suit jacket up. <laughs> kind of really strange pocket over here and uh, this little armrest. So but anyway, the M4 is not made for the back seat, right? So it's got things you'd expect. It has climbing control. It has two USB-Cs so you could charge a new iPhone or your iPad, whatever you want, watch a movie <laughs> like this. <laughs> but yeah, that's the back seat. <laughs> and as you may have seen earlier, the seats are electronic. So you just push it forward like that and then that'll move up and out of the way so you can get yourself out of the back seat. Now, as far as where's the rest of the ski going, it actually goes right back here in the trunk or if you're in the UK, the boot. Oh, there's a man sleeping. <laughs> so as you can see, plenty of room for a fully grown man. Good job, Andrew. Now, as we've mentioned probably 12 times by now, this car is a manual. So you can see that it is one of the last cars to probably have three pedals in it, especially with everything going electric. So I'm just gonna start this up. And as you can see, the pedals are just very functional. They look decent. Um, it has the metal on the outside and then a little rubber pad on the inside, but I'm sure there's going to be some kind of M performance upgrade for those. And then I just have my little plastic floor liner so we don't destroy the floor of this brand new M4. Now in the interior of this M4, it's very G style looking. If you've been in any of the other G cars like the M440, 340i and so forth, even like the X7 and whatnot. You'll notice that it has an M style wheel. It has the M at the bottom and has M stitching. And most importantly, it has your M1 and M2 buttons. Now with the M buttons, they enable you to configure the car exactly the way you want it. So if you want that crisp throttle response, we're gonna throw that on Sports Plus. Maybe you wanna tighten up your steering, put it on Sport. You can also adjust your braking, gear shift assistant and more. And then to save it, all you do is press and hold. Now, while we're talking about the screen here, it is a full touch screen. This is BMW's infotainment system, um, has everything, your communication, navigation, car. We could spend a day just talking about all the features in here. It even has an M menu where you can change everything from your instrument panel, what it looks like if you want it for road or sport. You can go back, you can configure your M settings, you can configure your head up display, which is right in front of my eyes. You can't really see it right now. So there's just a ton of different things that you can do all through this nice touch screen interface. Again, there's just way too much to go over everything, but you can see your tire pressure settings for each tire, also the temperature of each tire. You can see your engine oil level, which we're not gonna measure right this second. If there's any issues with the car, you're gonna know about it right there and even your required services. So you can see we have a, a break-in service in 1,200 miles, when to change your oil, when to change your brake fluid, everything. And this entire iDrive system is controlled either by touchscreen or with a standard iDrive controller. You'll also notice that this specific model comes with this aluminum trim. You can also get it in a carbon fiber option, which I think is going to look amazing on these cars, especially with an M car, you have to go carbon. All right, in here we have wireless charging, another USB-C, there's another regular USB up here, a 12 volt, you know, all, all things that you'd expect in a car like this. But something we haven't talked about is these seats. Check out how amazing these seats look. With these new M seats, they contour around your body. You can inflate the bolster to make it snugger or looser. And it also has these expandable thigh sections like you'd find on an F30. I don't know, they didn't do them on the uh, F80 and F82. And also, I haven't tried to figure it out yet, the headrest moves, which is kind of funny, but wasn't an option on the F80 and F82. This car also has gesture control, where you can do a variety of different commands, but we're gonna save that for its own video because this infotainment system is so good, it deserves its own video. So stay tuned because we're gonna have that coming up soon. All right, so right now we are taking the car out on the track um, just to get drone shots and other shots. I've probably driven around 15 times or so. As far as the initial impressions, ah, this might make me want a manual again. It drives so nice. As far as the steering's concerned, it's definitely nicer than the current generation with the F80s and the F82s. Um, definitely feels much more precise. I'm gonna try to not get Zach and Andrew sick here. 
Um, as far as the power delivery, it feels it feels like a tuned F80, like a, I don't wanna say like a stage one, because I don't think it's quite there, um, but it feels good, it feels very strong. I'm not getting on it fully. Um, like we're not really pushing this car to its limits or anything, we're just going around a very short track and it's not my car and I don't really wanna buy this specific one. So we're trying to, you know, just be respectful of it. The car feels great, the seats feel great. Um, it's not too firm of a ride. I would totally uh, go for a long drive in this one. It's just too fun to drive. And I think a big part of it is the manual. Now I'm a big DCT guy, my F80 M3 is DCT, but I don't know. This might be a fun car to be in a manual. And who knows how long they're gonna make manuals. So speaking of manual, it does have rev matching. So if you look over at the cluster, I'm not going to give it any gas. When you put it in the lower gear, it automatically flips the throttle for you. So you don't have to do that. Um, power delivery again, like we're on a closed track and the track isn't very big. But you can tell that this thing has a ton of potential and guys with um, the X3Ms and the X4Ms that have it tuned and have, you know, minor mods like downpipe and whatnot, guys are running in like 10 second quarter miles. So there's definitely an insane amount of power potential on this car. I'll tell you what, you know, when it first came out, I think there was a lot of shock factor, a lot of, you know, people didn't think that it was going to look like it did because of other renders and whatnot. And I think people are getting too fixed on how it, how it looks in pictures online. Once you see it, once you get behind the wheel and drive it, I think it's gonna change your opinion. We actually just ran into some other people who were here and they wanted to take a look at the car while we were doing our video here and they definitely liked it as well. They, they weren't really sure about it. They saw it in person and they said, yep, that's the one. The brakes on this, if you saw, there's six pots in the front and then, so it's funny, you have this really big caliper in the front that looks like the carbon ceramic and then you have this really tiny one in the back that looks like it's off of a Supra. Um, I'm not sure why BMW is putting that on the Supra on this and also the M340i, I think it looks kind of funny. Um, but, ugh, you feel the G-forces in your head when you, when you hit that brake. So they definitely do their job. All right, so after spending the entire day with this car, I can tell you that this car is a ton of fun, um, especially with the manual. Like I said before, I don't know how much longer BMW is going to make the manual, but after driving it today, it makes me want to drive the automatic to see what it's going to be like. Um, because I really like the DCT, and if it's too much different than that, I don't know, the manual might be the way to go. The only thing with the manual is you can't get the competition model, but in time, mark my words, there's going to be tuning options, just like there was with the F80s and whatnot. And that just opens up turbos and the whole bit, so. And it has gesture control. <laughs> and for those of you wondering, this car costs about $77,000 new, and it's pretty base. It has a couple features, but it doesn't have carbon ceramics, doesn't have the carbon seats, it doesn't have carbon fiber interior, so there's a lot of money that you can still throw out this car if you wanted to fully auction it out. So once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach, that's Andrew, thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. And if you are interested in a BMW, be sure to check out BMW of Turnersville. We have Adam and Paul's information for you down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.